Hey guys, so this is pretty much the last part of uh, my practice session where I either play through pieces or I learn something new. This could be a great opportunity to vlog uh, about me learning something. The piece I'm going to visit and try to learn as well as I can in a single sitting is uh, the Prelude P98 by John Dowland. Very beautiful, single page, pretty easy piece to play actually. What I'm going to do already is tune my G string on F sharp. So I'll just side read it first and let's see where that gets us. Yeah, it's extremely beautiful actually. I'll right away put the capo either on second or the third position, that's up to you, but I like more the second one, it's more logical for me because it's easier for me to orient myself. So this time I'll try just to go with my gut feeling about phrasing and make it more musical. It's a two-part piece with two phrases in the first part and then the second part which it's more alive, there are 16th notes, so it's more rapid. We have, I think, yeah, we have two phrases and a third one, like a codetta, like a small third one to finish the piece. So we'll just go with cut feeling and let's see what happens. So I think what's missing now is that I have to listen more to the basses as well. It has to sing, the melody has to sing, but the basses move the whole R harmony. The second thing I'm going to do is to add some smaller ornamentation. Not a lot. I think it can add up pretty nicely. There are not a lot of notes to play with, so we shouldn't add too much, I think.
yeah, this is a classic uh, Renaissance ornamentation to finish a major chord. It really doesn't work on a minor chord. It really doesn't work. So now I get it a lot more. I understand what kind of ornamentation I want to do. My phrasing is always following the basses. When the harmony progresses faster, I play faster. When the harmony is slower, I tend to slow down. I will try to play it by heart, so the notes do not make me think about what I should do or anything. Just go with pure, pure gut. Take a little bit more freedom since it's a prelude and preludes are supposed to be improvisations. The score sometimes is not a real aid, but actually an obstacle. If you think about it in general, when we play with score, we focus a lot on the notes, on the sheet, and not actually on our instrument. So it's pretty important to play by heart. Even if we don't know super well the piece, it's a very good exercise. I played it through like three, four times. I think I know it by heart. So I think the best version will be without the score. Yeah, that was so much fun actually. I had some doubts when I was playing it by heart, but actually I enjoyed it so much more and I could listen better, listen better to myself. I took a little bit more freedom than I should have, I guess. I'm not sure, I have to listen to the recording myself as well. I really enjoyed it because I felt that like I was almost improvising myself the music, not playing something already written. And that's the fun when you play some Renaissance free written preludes. And I think that should wrap this up. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm really interested to see what you're thinking about transformation of the piece from version to version when I go to the last version compared to the sight reading one. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. I'll see you in my next vlogs. I will try to post a new one next week as well. And yeah, yeah, see you around.